today's video takes place somewhere that needs no introduction. But here's one anyway, we're at Bike Park Wales. This is an absolutely amazing place to ride, so let's drop straight into the action. Yeah! Oh. This is nuts! There's so much fun to be had riding at a place like this. With great trails and a group of friends, not even the wet weather can dampen your spirits. Anyone who's anyone knows the Bike Park Wales is the UK mountain bike mecca. So today is an introduction to riding here and a couple of awesome trails to try. Firstly, Bike Park Wales has all the services that you'd want. A cafe, bike shop, toilets, bike wash, parking, but be warned, the car park does get full quickly. There's a dedicated push-up track for you fitter riders, or like most of us, you can get the uplift. Checking in and picking up your uplift tickets is swift and easy. If you've booked the uplift, you can spend a day hitting as many downhill trails as you like and getting a lift back to the top. If you want to know more about uplifts or how to use them, check out my video from last week. Bike Park Wales has loads of trails, so there's plenty for all skill levels. But don't expect to ride everything in one day, there's just way too much for that. Perhaps pick a few trails that you're really keen to ride and focus on those. The trails here range from easy flow trails, such as the Green Kermit on the right, all the way to some monster senders. The biggest I went is the A470 jump trail. This thing is huge, and I can't believe I was actually able to clear a few of the jumps on it. But believe me when I say, the trails get a lot gnarlier than this at Bike Park Wales. So I suggest starting on something a little easier for your first run. Here's a quick guide to a few trails that I enjoyed, and I recommend that you check them out. One of the trails I was excited to ride is Terry's Belly. Until the creation of Kermit, this was the longest continuous flow trail in the UK. Definitely worth putting on your list. This is my first time riding it, so I'm following Gaz from Adventure Trails. And Jim, Ben, Mark and Craig are also following behind. The trail starts from the top of the hill and winds its way all the way down to the bottom on some amazing swooping berms and faster flowing sections. Terry's belly is regarded as one of the best descents in Wales, and I was about to find out why. As you can see, the riding conditions today are on the wetter side. They weren't too bad here at the top, but they got a lot wetter the further down we went. Despite this, I can honestly say that riding in the wet doesn't make the trails here any less fun. There were a few slippery routes on some of the red trails that required a bit more concentration, but the trails are so well made and maintained that they can be ridden in all weathers. This section of the trail here is amazing. I can see why this is such a highly regarded flow trail. It felt awesome to ride and the combination of speed and flow was superb. You're darting in and out of the trees on a well thought out piece of trail. Honestly, what's not to like? This is amazing. In total, Terry's belly took us something like 10 minutes to get from the top to the bottom. 10 minutes doesn't sound like a long time, but when you're riding terrain like this, you don't realize how taxing it really can be. Although this isn't anywhere near the toughest or most technical trail that we rode today, because you're constantly looking ahead and positioning your bike around the berms, it's really, really active. By the time we eventually reached the bottom, I was definitely suffering from a bit of calf pump. Down towards the bottom of the trail, the conditions were getting slightly wetter. With waterproofs and goggles on, this wasn't an issue for us riding, but it does make filming a bit tricky. I bet you guys can't see anything in the camera. <laughs> Usually I try to wipe the camera lens off as I ride, but because the trail is so windy and active, I couldn't find a decent spot to take my hands off the bars. This is nuts. When riding a trail like this, it goes without saying, you need to be wearing the right sort of protective gear. Today, we're all kitted out with full face helmets, pads, gloves, and some sort of eye protection to keep the mud and spray out of our eyes. I was pretty glad that I had my bike serviced just before we came too. We finally made it to the bottom of Terry's belly. What an amazing piece of trail. For anyone at any standard of riding, I highly suggest you give this trail a go. It doesn't disappoint. They're in. The second trail I recommend you try is Willy Waver. Like Terry's belly, this is another superb flowing blue trail, except it's definitely faster and way more playful. 
This trail flows in from six to pod, but it turns up the heat due to its steeper gradient and much higher speeds. Riding Willy Waver, if you focus on using the berms and corners to your full advantage, you can turn some of the trail features into jumps and add that little bit of extra spice to an already fun trail. Although I'm a big fan of just natural trails, I love this type of crafted flow trail. Because you're speeding down the hill and weaving from side to side, this trail makes you feel like a World Cup rider. It definitely has that awesome confidence boosting quality about it. At around 1.4 kilometers in length, but with no difficult features to speak of, Willy Waver is a fun and accessible trail for most riders. But be warned, the Strava leaderboard for Willy Waver boasts some impressively fast times. As a mere mortal, you should expect this trail to take around four minutes, but one thing is guaranteed, that this is four minutes of pure fun. Based on its awesome speed and superb slaloms, I had to put Willy Waver on this list. If you're looking to ride Bike Park Wales, then linking six to pod with Willy Waver is a great warm-up line and a great confidence booster. This will get you ready to hit some of the longer, harder trails that are on offer. Yeah, enjoyed. The last trail I want to show you is Rimdinger. This is one of the more technical red graded trails. Rimdinger is certainly a more natural looking trail than the other two. It's also the kind of trail that makes you glad that you're riding a full suspension bike. Now, I can't tell you the exact origin of its name, but I think it's safe to assume that it earns its title due to the savage rocks you're about to meet. According to the staff, this section of trail is said to have claimed more punctures than any other trail at Bike Park Wales. So let that be a warning to you. Rimdinger is around 1.2 kilometers in length and takes around three minutes to ride from top to bottom. It's essentially a number of linked rock gardens with a few small drops and jumps thrown in to make the trail more fun. Due to its technical and unstable nature, this trail has the potential to do you and your bike a lot of damage. And when I say unstable, yes, I mean some of the rocks move as you ride over them. But if you build up enough speed, you can sail over the rocks with a bit more ease. However, if you're going slow, this section becomes an impossible exercise in balance and trying to maintain your cadence. Speed is your friend. Now, this technical rocky style of riding may not be everyone's cup of tea, but it shows a diverse range of trails that the Bike Park Wales has to offer. It's a trail that has a pretty hefty reputation, but it's a Welsh classic nonetheless. Even in today's wet conditions, Rimdinger was awesome. So, if you haven't ridden them already, these are three trails that I recommend you put on your list for Bike Park Wales. On that note, thanks for watching this video, let me know your favourite Bike Park Wales trail in the comments, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time. You might be like a crab and just be going sideways. Yeah, shall we, mate?